Hi guys, so you have installed Kali Linux in your virtual box, nice. If not, no big deal. Just check out our video on how to install Kali Linux in virtual box and then came back here. Now before you start flexing with your friends about your new hacking setup, there are a few essential steps you need to take. And guys, installing Kali Linux doesn't make you a hacker, but practice does. So hi guys, my name is Jarvis and in this video, I'll show you what to do after installing Kali Linux in your virtual box. First thing first, open the terminal and uh, run this command. If you're not updating, you are already behind. So run this command sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade hyphen y. This will fetch the latest updated and make sure your system isn't stuck in the past. It's crucial to have uh, latest tools and security patches, especially when you're working in cybersecurity. Now our system is up to date. Uh, let's make sure we have the necessary VirtualBox guest edition installed. First, you need to install the necessary kernel header. Open the terminal and run the following command. Uh, this command installs the kernel header for your current uh, kernel version, which are required for compiling and installing guest edition. So wait for it. Uh, once it's done, press Ctrl F to exit the full screen mode in VirtualBox. Uh, next, go to the devices menu in the VirtualBox. And here click on insert guest edition 3d image. This will mount the guest edition ISO file as a virtual CD in your Kali. Uh, now open the file manager and here you will see a new folder named as uh, vbox g or something uh, similar. Uh, this is where the guest edition files are stored. So copy all the files and folder and paste wherever you want. And let me paste into the uh, music folder. Once the file are pasted, right click inside that folder and choose open terminal here. This will open the terminal in the directory where all the files are located. Uh, now type ls to view all the files. And here you should see a script named as uh, vblinuxaddition.run. Uh, copy this name uh, to use in the next command. Now to make the script executable, uh, type the following command. Uh, here chmod is used to change the permission of the files or directory. In this case, we are using chmod777, uh, uh, which set permissions to fully open, meaning anyone can read, write, or execute the file. Uh, now let's run the script, type the following command to start the installation. This is script installed VirtualBox Guest Edition, which provide features like better uh, screen resolution, seamless mouse integration, and share folder between your host and Kali. Now that installation is complete, we need to reboot the system for the changes to affect. Once the system reboot, you will notice the difference in how smoothly is your virtual machine run. Uh, let's move on to another important step, synchronizing time in Kali Linux. Proper time synchronization is essential for accurate timestamp and log, which is crucial for any serious work you are doing on this system. First, let's make sure the current date and time. So open the terminal and type this command, date. This command display a uh, current date and time according to your system setting. As you can see in my case, it's showing 9.57 am. But if I show you my local time, it's actually 6.39 pm. We will fix this in a moment. Now type time date CDL in the terminal. This command gives you a detailed output showing local time, universal time, your time zone and the status of NTP service. NTP stands for Network Time Protocol. You might notice that NTP service is inactive. But don't worry, we will show you how to activate this. So to do all the things, we need to install NTP set. To synchronize your system time with the uh, network time servers. So just go ahead and install this. I have already installed it, so let's move on to the next step. Next, we need to start this NTP sec service. So run this command. This command is start the NTP SAC service along your system to begin synchronization time with the network servers. This command is start the NTP SAC service along your system to begin synchronizing time with the network server. To ensure that NTP SAC start automatically every time your, when your system boots up, uh, so we need to run this command sudo systemctl enable NTP SAC. Now to confirm the NTP is running or not, we need to run this command sudo systemctl status uh, NTP sec. And here as you can see output indicating that service is active or running, which means that uh, NTP service is operational and will automatically start on system boots. Next, verify that our system time is synchronized properly or not. So type this command. 
and here if you see a similar entries to this it means your system is properly synchronized with NTP servers uh, let's set our local time zone by this command you can check all the available time zones once you have identified your local time zone let's set it for example if you are in India then run this command and that's it we have successfully set up a uh, time zone ensuring our system clock is accurate and relevant so uh, as you can see my time zone is now set to Asia Kolkata which means we are aligned to India's time zone so let's check with local time zone and here as you can see time is not showing correct uh, let's confirm this in setting and yes as you can see uh, it's 7 31 pm which means 19 32 and 24 hour format let's set up shared folder shared folder allow us to easily share files between your host computer and your virtual machine if you have a folder with many files name uh, you can make it a shared folder to access those files in kali linux uh, to do this open your virtual box and go to the setting of kali linux virtual box and here uh, in the setting window click on the shared folder tab uh, and then click on the add new shared folder button and here uh, select the folder you want to share with your host machine uh, let's suppose I want to share a picture folder as a shared folder so I'll select that now give the shared folder any name you would like and make sure auto mount option is checked this ensures that the folder will automatically mount each time you start your virtual machine once done click on ok to save the changes now let's verify that the shared folder is working or not so open your Kali Linux virtual machine and then open the file manager. Here as you can see shared folder is visible and accessible. You can now transfer file between your host machine and virtual machine using this shared folder. This makes super easy to move files in and out of your Kali Linux virtual environment. Let's set up auto login feature for your Kali virtual machine. This will save you the hassle of entering your credentials every time you start your virtual machine. I have prepared a script to automate this and yes you can also do this from the setting but since you are a Linux user you have to do this with terminal. So open the text editor and paste the following code. I will include this code in the description below. But guys remember to replace uh, Jarvis with your actual username. And guys in this step 1 this script add auto login setting to the lightdm configuration file and uh, make sure to replace Jarvis with your actual username. And here is tab 2 creates auto login group if doesn't already exist. Here hyphen flag main force and prevent error if already group exists. And in step 3 we are adding user to that created group. Step 4 restart lightdm which is necessary for changes to take effect. And these last lines are nothing but just a print statement to let you know that the script ran successfully or not. Now let's save this file with any name. But make sure the extension is .sh. We will save it uh, as autologin.sh. Uh, let's open it in terminal. Uh, first run this command. This command changes the script permission and allowing to be executed. Next run the script with this command. Once you run this script, uh, your system will automatically reboot without asking for a login. So let me fast forward this part. As you can see, we are logged in into Kali Linux without needing uh, to enter a password. So, auto login is successfully set up. Next thing you can do after installing Kali Linux is to enable USB support uh, to use the devices like Wi Fi adapter, pen drive, and mobile phone. So, let's open File Manager in our Windows. And as you can see, I have only one drive, which is C. Uh, so, let me connect my phone first. As you can see, Pixel 6a is connected. Uh, let's access this in our Kali Linux virtual machine. First, let me show you it is accessible or not. Uh, so, oh, let's open file manager. And as you can see, uh, our Pixel 6a is not showing up in uh, Linux file manager. Now we need to open the VirtualBox uh, dashboard and go to the setting of Kali Linux virtual machine. And here click on the USB tab. Uh, and then click on add button. Uh, the one with the USB icon and the plus icon and select your USB drive from the list uh, here is my Pixel 6a let me select it and then click on OK this will attach uh, the USB device to your virtual machine uh, let's uh, check it is accessible or not 
and here as you can see pixel uh, 6a is not showing yet uh, to fix this we need to shut down our system and restart it our system is reboted uh, let's let me quickly open the file manager and yes as you can see we can now access our pixel 6a uh, if it is showing up here it's mean it's successfully connected and accessible in our virtual machine please note while you access this usb drive within kali uh, it won't appear in your windows file manager if you need to access a usb device from windows uh, you need to disconnect first and then uh, reconnect with your windows system and guys you can copy and paste uh, to this connected device in kali linux so transferring file between your host and your virtual machine should be smooth and easy now we have done a lot let's move on to the hardware acceleration uh, to do this open your settings in your virtual machine and click on system in the setting menu allocate at least two to four uh, cores to your virtual machine uh, depending on your needs and available resources and here make sure to enable PAE uh, slash NX it allow virtual machine to access more than 4 GB of RAM which is crucial for handling a large application or data sets uh, next go to acceleration and here I'll show that uh, nested paging is enabled once it's done uh, go to display and here make sure to enable 3D acceleration if not enabled once you have made the changes uh, click on ok to save them so our system is restarted uh, let's do one more thing to optimize the system performance uh, so open the terminal and run this following command uh, to install meta utils this package includes a set of utilities for checking your graphics hardware and its performance so wait for it once the installation is completed uh, run this command uh, this command will output information about whether hardware rendering is enabled or not uh, if this command uh, return nothing, uh, then run the following command instead. Here, as you can see, the output like SVGA 3D build release L LVM. This suggests that the graphic rendering is being handled by the virtualized driver. With all these steps completed, you should notice the improved performance and better graphics handling in your Kali Linux virtual machine. Now that we have optimized our system on the hardware level, let's focus on the hardware optimization. Uh, one important aspect is adjusting swappiness value. Swappiness determines how often your system uses swap uh, versus RAM. A lower value means uh, more use of RAM, which is better for performance if you have enough RAM. So to check the current swappiness value, uh, run this command. As you can see, the value is 60, indicating a balanced approach. Uh, lowering it to 10 or 20 can improve the performance if you have enough RAM. Uh, so to change the swappiness value, run this command. Swappiness value is set. Let's check it again. And yes, our swappiness value is changes to 10. But guys, this set the swappiness for the current session. Uh, to make it permanent, we need to update the uh, configuration file. So open the configuration file uh, by this command. And here paste vm.swappiness equal to 10. Or uh, you can give any value like 10 or 20. And press Ctrl S to save the changes and press Ctrl X to exit. Uh, now run this command to check whether it is changed or not. So yes, value is not 10, indicating the change is permanent. And guys, you can uh, use this command to display the memory usage uh, in human readable format, showing how much RAM and swap space is in use. Our system is optimized and we have done some basic setup. Uh, let's enhance Kali Linux by installing some useful tool. Uh, to install this tool, run this command. Stop is a powerful interactive process viewer that shows real-time system usage in a user-friendly interface. Teamup is a terminal multiplexer that allows you to manage multiple uh, terminal sessions from a single window, making uh, multitasking easier. NCDU is a disk usage analyzer that helps you find and manage large files and directories. And guys, some tool might be pre-installed with your Kali Linux environment. And guys, make sure to install Git if it is not already installed. It's time for some customization to make Kali Linux uh, feel more like your own. Uh, let's start with adjusting the fonts and scaling. Here you can change the font type, font size for the interfaces and documents. You can adjust the scaling factor to make everything on the screen larger or smaller, depending on your preferences. Uh, and guys, from the appearance, you can change the icon shape, 
cursor style and much more uh, now in windows you can customize the double click action middle click and the secondary click you can also hide and show these minimize and maximize button even uh, you can change the placement of these buttons these adjustments will give you a personalized and more efficient focus space in Kali Linux. Now in the startup application, uh, you can add any application you want. Uh, these applications will start automatically when you turn on your Kali Linux virtual machine. And be cautious not to add so many apps, as this might your slow down your uh, system startup time. Now before we wrap up, here are the final touches to personalize your Kali Linux experience. Uh, change the background wallpaper uh, to something you like. This makes your workspace more enjoyable and visually appealing. Enable or disable dark mode based on the preferences. Take some time to explore and adjust other settings accordingly. This will help you to make your Kali Linux truly your own. And that's a wrap up on comprehensive guide on what to do after installing Kali Linux in virtual machine. And you have successfully set up, customized and optimized Kali Linux in virtual box. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give a big thumbs up and consider subscribing the channel. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. This is Jarvis signing off.